My friends, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. I hope you all are doing well. Talk about a beautiful place. The entire forest is covered in snow. It is absolutely stunning out here. I've been on the trail for the last couple of hours, and now it's time to begin looking for a campsite. I tell you what, I'm so thankful that the conditions are calm today, because in truth, this is the second time that I've attempted this adventure. I came out yesterday, hiked up this mountain, and when I got up here, the winds were roaring over 60 miles an hour. It was crazy. So after considering the conditions, I turned around and headed home. Folks, we made it up here. The conditions are perfect. Let's keep looking for the perfect campsite. I'm at the point now where I've gone down far enough, it's time to begin wrapping around this mountain. Up here at the top, that's where I suspect I'll find a good spot to camp at tonight. Hiking in this is definitely slow going. There's a layer of ice underneath all of this snow that makes it super, super slick. That's one of the reasons why I really didn't film the hike all the way up this mountain. It would have been me just like huffing and puffing and sliding backwards. You know, folks, this looks too good to pass up. It's flat right here. I could set up the tent, plenty of firewood. This is what I call perfection. With the majority of the camping that I do, I'm off trail, so this here is just amazing. <laughs> Most of the time it's not even flat, but this is. So that is nice. Before I select this spot for sure, I need to make sure there's no widow makers. And nope, I'm in good shape. So without a doubt, this is the spot. Now that, my friends, is a problem. Now folks, that poses a serious problem. The tent pole for this tent just broke. And it broke right where it goes into the hub, meaning this is a very complicated fix. All that I can do now is to try to come up with a solution that gets me through the night. This tent here is the Light Fighter One Person Tent. This is a military tent. I put the cold weather system on top. The poles, I don't remember what they call them, ballistic fiber poles or something like that. They're not aluminum. What's kind of interesting, the moment that the pole broke, it sent a shock wave through that pole. And between two of the pieces, it bit me, bit me. And as you can see there, drew blood. 
Okay, I am going to think about this for just a little bit and come up with a plan. Let's see what we can do with this tent, even though it's broken. Good news, everybody. I was able to repair this pole. This is a one-time thing. I can use it for this trip, and that's it. I was able to cut the cordage that holds the pole together, cut out the defective part, retie it, and I was able to get the pole into the hub. So this is going to work for this trip, but this pole is done. When you go out camping, backpacking, and so on, stuff like this is going to happen. So you need to be able to come up with solutions to make do, to make it through the night, to make it through your trip. This is my solution. It's the best that I can come up with. After 40 minutes, the tent has been set up. That should have taken 10 minutes and no more, but the whole thing was a fiasco. The pole breaking, that's really, really interesting. In all of my years of camping, I've never had a pole issue like this before, so that's definitely unique. Luckily, we were able to come up with a solution. The tent set up. Now let's set up camp. As you all saw there, I took my gas canister and I put it inside of my jacket, close to my chest here. I'm going to warm this up before I use it, and that's because it's so cold. When you have cold fuel, your stove will burn it very inefficiently. So I'm gonna take a couple seconds here, warm it up, and then we'll make some coffee.
I'm standing here staring at this tent thinking about that pole failure. And I'm thinking about the trip that I did yesterday up here. I mean, as soon as I got to the top here, it was so windy, like 60, 70 miles an hour. I contemplated camping, but in the end, I don't mess with wind. Wind will kill you. Trees, exposure, yeah, you just don't do it. But what if I did? What if I set up this tent? What if it didn't break? But what if it broke during the night? Something like that. I could have been in big, big trouble. The temperature this morning up here was nine degrees. Imagine what the winds were like. I don't know, my friends. Is that what they call divine intervention? Maybe so. What do you all think? Do you believe in that sort of stuff? I personally believe that things just happen. Luckily, I made the right decision. I left last night. I could have made the wrong decision, and this could have happened. In the end, it's all about being able to handle the situations, handle the conditions, and handle whatever may take place. Unfortunately, the quality of the firewood that's up here is rather poor at the moment. And that's because of the snow that was laying on top of everything. Even with these larger diameter pieces of wood, they're soaked all the way through. Because of that, burning large pieces of wood like this, it's no good. But luckily, the small stuff, it's had enough time to dry out for the most part. There's a little bit of snow, a little bit of ice on it, but I could definitely get it to burn. With this big stuff, it'd be a real fight. As far as the firewood goes, I think that's as good as it's going to get. I have plenty of small stuff surrounding me, so I'm not going to collect any more. If I need it, I'll go pick it. But um, everything in this forest is simply too wet, too covered in ice, or too covered in snow. In heavy wet snow like this, it's a good idea to have a handsaw and an axe. Unfortunately, I have neither. With this load out here, it was quite heavy. Cold weather sleeping bag, good down to 15 degrees. Military tent very heavy. When you factor in food, water, and clothing, I've packed up roughly 37 pounds worth of gear. That's enough. That's enough. In the end, we will have a fire, but we may not enjoy it for as long as I planned, though. That's okay. That's how it goes. Something that you may not think about as viewers of this channel and other channels is that the individuals who are filming those videos, those adventures, they have to have enough energy left over after the hike to be able to film in camp. It's one of those things you have to kind of balance like distance, how much exertion, how much you're carrying, how far you're going, while still having enough energy to film in camp, talk to the camera and all that stuff. Those are the factors that go into filming an overnight trip like this. It's so much work so much effort, it takes so much energy, and at the same time, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it really is, folks. I have a blast doing this. I really do appreciate you all joining me for these adventures. It does mean a lot. It's kind of crazy, folks. 2023 is basically behind us now. I don't know when exactly this video will go up, so it could be after Christmas, after the new year. I'm not sure. No matter when this goes up, I just want to say a big thank you to everyone for making the Outdoor Gear Review and A Quiet Place Adventures the channels that they are. The views are off the charts. The watch times are off the charts. 2023 was an amazing year, and I know 2024 will be as well.
Well, you know what, folks? I think it's time for a fire. It's about 15 minutes after 4 o'clock. The sun goes down at 514. We might as well get a fire going since we don't have too much firewood. My plan will be as soon as it gets dark, I'll just go to bed. Plus, I'm getting hungry, everybody, so let's get a fire going. Let's have dinner. Here in a minute, our water will be boiling, but I tell you, it has been a struggle. This stuff is so wet, and you can see that. You can see how much smoke is coming off of the stove here. All of that is just moisture. Melting snow, melting ice, and wet wood. For dinner tonight, we are having orange chicken again. I had this a few weeks back and it is awesome. Really, really good. The sun is making its way down now. It'll be dark in about 15 minutes, something like that. But it is beautiful, especially with the smoke going through like the sun rays. It's incredible. It really is trips like this that show the importance of having a good fire kit. Everything in this forest is soaking wet. And if I didn't have that fire kit, this fire would not be going, that's for sure. The pocket bellows specifically has saved the day. Being able to extend it, then blow right onto that fire to get it going, priceless.
before I dig into dinner and turn off the camera, we need to talk about Tony over at AB Camping. And we need to talk about his van, Tug Tug. <laughs> so it's been some weeks for me when I mentioned in the video the name of his van, which is Tug Tug, the secret name, right? So <laughs> he may have retaliated since then, I don't know. But so far, it's been quiet. But I wanted to share with you all what he said to me. Oh my God, everyone's asking why I renamed Buddy to Tug Tug Laugh Out Loud. Revenge will be sweet. <laughs> and I said, there will always be retribution. I do not negotiate with terrorists. I followed this up by saying that Tug Tug is a freaking awesome nickname for his van. It adds so much personality to it, don't it? Buddy, no. Tug Tug, oh yeah. <laughs> he says, oh my God, could you imagine? And I'm like, it's a real conversation starter. I then told him that he should get some graphics on the side that say Tug Tug. <laughs> he says he'll think about it, which I think is a good start. That's a huge piece of ice. Good grief. I can imagine Tony driving little Tug Tug. He's going up a hill, it's struggling, and he's like, come on Tug Tug, you got this. It kind of has like a ring to it. It's kind of catchy, you know what I mean? A few days later, I get a message from Tony saying, laugh out loud, I'm getting hit hard by the Tug Tug information requests. People are so confused, laugh out loud. People think you're this dead serious guy. I responded and said, ha ha ha, I was serious about the Tug Tug nickname. It's awesome. And I said, if you would just go ahead, call it Tug Tug, it would solve a lot of problems. And I said, go ahead and just consider doing that for all of our viewers, okay? <laughs> that is where we're at, my friends, as far as little Tug Tug. <laughs> Tony's Tug Tug. <laughs> tug Tug sounds so much better than little buddy, don't it? Come on, buddy, let's go. No, that doesn't work. Come on, Tug Tug, you got this. Yeah, that does. <laughs> It's a clear night. I can see the moon and the stars. It's beautiful. Unfortunately, that means it's going to get cold tonight. Think of clouds as insulation like a blanket. If you pull the blanket away, you get cold, right? That's how it works in the wintertime as well. Luckily, I have this tent here and I have the cold weather kit. Now, just in case you don't know what that is, think of it as like a fourth season add-on to this tent. The tent itself is three season and it has mesh. The cover that I put over it adds fabric to it and it holds in heat and at the same time it blocks wind. Then you have the fly. Tonight, I'll hop inside of that tent, zip it all up, and I'll be nice and warm. <laughs> and then tomorrow I'll go home and throw those poles in the garbage. With the moon being out, it is driving those coyotes wild. There was a pack over here, fairly close. I looked to see if I could see some eyeballs, but nothing. But they're definitely close. There's a pack over here, and there's a pack over here as well. Well, my friends, I'm inside of the tent, ready to call it a night. It's not all that late, but there's nothing to do. <laughs> all of the wood out here is just simply too wet to burn. It just takes so much work. Because of that, I think I'll just call it a night and get up early. Everybody, sleep good. I will see you all in the morning. Good night for now.
Good morning, everybody. It is now 6.28 in the morning. It is windy outside, so I'm staying inside of the tent. I brought a tarp with me, but I did not set it up, and it's too late for this adventure. I'm not going to. <laughs> I slept for like 11 hours. Something like that. <laughs> I think I got inside of the tent around 7. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, it was a quiet night very peaceful didn't hear anything well i take that back i did hear a deer at one point in time i got just a little bit of service i was looking at something a friend sent me and i started laughing and it spooked a deer that was like laying over here <laughs> so i heard it like get up and just bolt through the woods it's pretty funny um every once in a while i'll see a little bit of snow fly through the air here i believe we have a passing flurry going by this morning Oh yeah, everybody, that is awesome. This is a combination of a three-in-one with some Taster's Nasty Hazelnut and Taster's Nasty House Blend. I'll tell you what everybody, before I forget, let's do some shout outs here. I have some Christmas shout outs. Mike, my friend, thank you so much for this knife. This is sweet, folks flipper oh yeah super sharp i love it thank you so much buddy i really do appreciate it arlene thank you so much for the goodies including the tim hortons coffee you are amazing thank you so much neil thank you so much for the beanie i will probably be wearing that in the next adventure brian thank you so much for the beanie as well it is awesome i can't wait to use it john thank you so much for the headlamp i cannot wait to test that out shelly merry christmas to you thank you so much for being such a good friend to Susie. i know she really does appreciate you and so do i paul thank you so much for the coffee my friend thank you thank you mitch and naomi thank you so much for everything that you both did you two went above and beyond thank you so much for these boots they are incredible seriously they are super super nice very comfortable thank you and also thank you so much for that beautiful bowl for Susie you two are extremely generous and we are thankful Craig my friend thank you so much for your kindness and everything that you've done for the channel you've been a viewer for a long time and a good friend unfortunately we can't talk through email for some reason I never did learn of what the issue was it was something on his end I don't know he couldn't send emails or couldn't receive them I don't know but we still get the letters it's always good to hear from you. It sounds like you're doing well. Merry late Christmas to everybody. <laughs> Since it's probably January something now when you're watching this. That's how it goes. Cheers, everybody, cheers. Tell you what, I am glad that I'm not outside of this tent right now. It's not terribly windy, but it's enough. It's just windy enough where it's coming through the forest here. You can still hear the ice breaking off of the trees, hitting the ground. It looks like the sun will be coming up at 7.35 today. It is a shame that the tent pole broke for this tent. I will contact Lightfighter and ask about those ballistic fiber poles. Just in case you do not know this, Lightfighter is a military contractor for the US military. I've tested out quite a few of their products. I've also exposed some issues where the company had to make recalls. Basically, I'm doing my civilian part to help out soldiers in the United States. I could say that I've done some good. Cheers to them. I got the stove going again to warm up my coffee. It cools down pretty quick when it's this cold out. I can see that the sun is coming up and here in a minute, I'll begin packing up. Before I do, let me tell you all about this message that I received. It's from a guy named Jim. He sent, he sent this message on Instagram and basically he was super angry that I didn't go for a backpacking trip like a video back or so. Like the previous trip was a backpacking trip and then the adventure that he's talking about, it was like a hot tent video. What I like to do with the channel here is I like to mix it up. 
That way, every single time an adventure goes up, it's different. So one time I'll go backpacking, the next time I might do a truck camp, and then a hot tent. I don't know. Anyways, in the end, I told him that this is what I'll do. I'm going to film and put up the adventures that I want to, and then he could decide whether or not he wants to watch them. I don't care. <laughs> Does not matter to me. I make content because I want to share my experiences in the outdoors. I want to inspire and at the same time I want to educate. That's what this channel is all about. My YouTube friends and I, we talk about this all the time. The weird complaints that we all receive. It's funny how entitled some people feel like they are. <laughs> These gloves have seen better days, folks. It's about time for a new pair. What do you all think? <laughs> oh yeah. This, everybody, was a nice trip. It's been so long since I've done a trip where I'm not going home with just like a ton of soaking wet gear. It's kind of funny, lately at the house it's been so rainy and snowy. I've been doing a bunch of testing, a bunch of adventures, but I haven't been able to dry out any gear at all. So on the porch, there's a wet tent. On the deck, there's three wet tents, three wet ground sheets. <laughs> and now I'm going home with all of this stuff. Every single time that I go home from a trip, I dry out my gear. You take the sleeping bag out of the compression bag, lay it out, let it dry out. Do the same for your pillow, your sleeping pad. Make sure to dry out your tent. Make sure that all of the dirt gets cleaned off. If you want your gear to last forever, that's what you have to do. It's pretty funny. Someone mentioned <laughs> in an email that my gear looks pristine with the exception of this kettle right here. This is the nastiest looking kettle they've ever seen. That's pretty funny. So when you look at this kettle, it does look dirty, right? But I have washed this a whole bunch. What we have here is built up carbon and we also have like resin from like sap and stuff like that. So this stuff is extremely hard to get off. It can be done. You could take Barkeeper's Friend and you could scrub it up and you can make it look brand new. Again, that's a ton of work. <laughs> I'm just not going to do it. I'll wash it, put it up, continue to use it. And now it has some character to it. You know what I mean? As you all could see, I have everything packed up. The site is clear, it's time to go. Thank you all so much for joining me for this trip. I really do appreciate it. If you have enjoyed this adventure, hit the thumbs up. It helps the channel quite a bit. Everybody, take care, be well, strength and honor. I'll see you next week. Bye, folks.